crafty friends it's Jess from JessCrafts.com and today I am here with another 6x6 paper pad tutorial today I'm using the doodlebug under the sea paper pad and if you saw my haul video you know that I purchased the icon stickers to go with it just so that I could maybe stretch the paper pad a little bit further as it works out to be a pretty good deal seven dollars on average for the paper pad sometimes you get a little bit cheaper scrapbook.com seems to have them on sale pretty consistently and then two dollars for the stickers so and i'm going to be making 26 cards so i think that's a pretty good value this paper pad though does not have any sentiments like some of the other doodlebug paper pads so i did add a sentiment set and i'm going to use one sentiment set throughout the entire card making video so all 26 cards from the one stamp set as well and the stamp set is called Just Because, and it's from Create a Smile Stamps. So to get started, I'm just sort of flipping through the paper pad, letting you see what's in the paper pad, but also trying to sort of start thinking about what am I going to do with this paper pad. I know that my first step, as always, is to take out the papers that have those little cut apart elements and cut them apart. And so um, when I am waiting to work with a paper pad, I always put it in a quart size Ziploc bag so that all the pieces stay together. And I don't always use up a whole paper pad at once, so that's helpful. Now, this really large print with the mermaids and had the like dream sentiment on the top, I didn't really like that for a card. So I'm going to be cutting that apart. And I cut the strip of mermaid and I'm going to use that on a card. And then I just basically flipped the sentiment over and instead created some little squarish pieces that I can work with throughout the card making. Now my next step after I cut apart anything that like I feel like obviously should be cut apart, such as these little, little, you know, cut apart spots, journaling spots, whatever you call these things. <laughs> um, I start looking at them all. I sort of pair them up. This particular paper pad has two of each thing. And so I will generally make two of each card because like once I come up with a card design, I'll just make it twice. I find that to be a little bit faster and easier. And I also start thinking like, which are my favorite? Which do I definitely, definitely want to use? And which are my not so favorite? And I think I might want to mix up or, you know, just might not be my priority. Then I start looking at the paper pad and um, which side of the papers I think might work a little bit better, which way I want to cut the papers. There is a solid paper that is purple on one side and that sort of like orangey coral color on the other. And I wanted to cut that apart and turn it into sentiment strips because there are no sentiment strips in this paper pad. So I'm going to cut that into three quarter inch strips and stamp sentiments on it. But then I'm going to take a bunch of the other papers in the collection and I'm going to cut them to just a quarter inch under an A2 size card. I like to leave a white border around my cards, so that's why I do that. And it leaves you a two inch strip. So basically I'm cutting them at four by five and a quarter, which leaves three quarters by four inch strip and a two by six inch strip. And that two by six inch strip comes in handy for a lot of layering, but also you could glue two of them together to make another card sized piece. And so I just kind of go through and cut a whole bunch of papers with that in mind. And I think about which way I want the papers to go because once they're cut, sometimes it's hard to change the orientation. Like this one here has a bunch of mermaids. And if I cut it so that it's a horizontal card, I won't be able to later switch it to a vertical card. So I'm kind of making those decisions now um, about what I think is going to work out best. Then I come to this paper that has all those little squares on it, and I don't know what I want to do with it yet. I don't know if I want to try to cut them all apart and glue them together, if I want to just say, you know, don't worry about the squares, and I will, you know, use the back side of the paper. So I just kind of put it off to the side and didn't let myself stress about it. So here I have some card bases ready to go. That one that looks a solid coral there actually has a very subtle pattern. But I need to get those sentiment strips because, you know, I, I need some sentiments to pair up with the cards. So I'm going to take this orange piece. And the way that I decided how wide to make it was basically taking my clear stamp set, as you can see here, and sort of lining it up with the ruler on my paper trimmer. 
and I saw that one inch was probably going to be a little too thick, leave a little too much space. And if I did one inch, I'd only get six uh, strips from it. So I thought, well, let me see if I can scooch it down just a bit to about three quarters of an inch. And then I'll be able to get, I think, like eight sentiments out of it instead. And so that's what I did. And I cut just one piece to that size. And then since I thought, well, that's a lot of sentiment strips, and I have some of those cut aparts that already have their own um, their own sayings on them, I probably don't need to use two full sheets. So I the second piece that was solid, I instead I um, just left it as a card base. Also, there is a three quarter inch strip created every time I cut a card base, so I can use those for sentiments on some of the semi-solid pieces of paper. You'll kind of see more of that later. they will be a little more clear about it. But I decided to work with the large mermaid strip first because I thought that I might need to be essentially a little bit more picky with what that paired with because it was so big and had so much detail. And I thought at first that I would just be able to like lay a sentiment across the bottom of it or something, but I didn't like that it covered up so much of the mermaid, so I decided to put the sentiment right across the top. And so I'm picking up one of those solid, you know, strips of three and a quarter, and I'm gluing it right across the top of the card. And then this little stripe piece is actually the um, reverse side. So it was on the bottom of the mermaids originally, and I had trimmed it to make the mermaid strip a little thinner. And so rather than just, you know, tossing that scrap, I'm going to use the pattern on the other side of the scrap to just kind of create a little more interest on this card. And the peach coral, I, I think I should just call it coral, the coral paper, um, again, is not fully solid, even though it looks mostly solid. You can't see the details with the camera here. Um, but it adds a little bit of a subtle touch below the uh, mermaid. And then I'm going to be able to take the sentiment and stamp it across. So as I mentioned, I'm using one sentiment set but there are three different sentiments that I felt really worked for my purpose. As you probably know um, from watching some of the other videos similar to this, I have you know one on under fun in the sun and cream and sugar and the Easter Express. I have all those out. I um, donate my cards, and so I want them to be very general. I want to be, one organization I like to donate to is Cards for Hospitalized Kids. So it's best to have general sentiments, and in this stamp set. It's called Just Because, and so there are some general sentiments like Just Because, A Little Hello, and Thinking of You. And I'm going to use those same three sentiments throughout these cards. And I'm going to stamp in VersaFine ink because it'll give a nice solid impression with just regular stamp blocks. So here I am looking at a couple of different pattern papers and cut aparts at the same time. And basically my goal is to lay a couple of these cut aparts together onto pattern paper and then sort of like put it off to the side. So like come up with a bunch of ideas at one time before I glue anything down. Because if I glue something down and then I find that, oh, uh, you know, I really got to the point where none of these cut aparts match any of the pattern paper left, I'm going to have a problem. So I like to kind of just lay out a couple of thoughts put it off to the side and keep working and then kind of return to those if I feel like it's working out. So I thought, well, with those say those cut aparts that had a lot of busyness going on in the background, I needed a pretty solid paper. So I designed with that one first, put it off to the side. Now I'm working with this other one that says a beautiful little girl and it has that striped background. So again, I'm thinking it's probably going to need to be on a little bit more of a solid piece. Um, however, I like the beautiful little girl sentiment with the mermaids. I think that makes sense. And as much as I really, really love that rainbow wave paper, it's just not working. So I'm deciding to turn it over and use the more solid coral starfish side of that paper. And I've put it off to the side and I'm going to pick a new journaling card to design with, uh, or cut apart. And I have these striped papers which were the back of the mermaid so I used the strip of mermaid but the sentiment that was on top that I didn't want for a card I now have those back sides so I want to layer a cut apart 
onto one of those larger rectangle pieces that I had created. And I thought that these ones that were like mostly white, there's a flower and a seashell one where it's mostly white. I thought that would be, you know, pair up well with the striped paper because the stripe is busy, whereas the other one has a lot of white space. And so I, again, with that busy striped paper, paired some things that were a little more calm, like that pink paper that's monochromatic is a little more of a calm background. So I thought that paired well. Whereas here you can see that striped paper on a busy background, not as nice. I, I mean, to me personally, obviously if you like a little bit more pattern, then you can go for it. And here I actually am like, maybe I, maybe I can do that. Maybe I can, you know, go really, really strong with the pattern. But I feel like when you do that, sometimes you kind of have to like jump in all the way. So if you looked at that and you saw, well, you know, maybe I think it looked better on the blue paper, then go for it. But I decided that, you know, maybe it's a more of a risk to go like pattern on pattern on pattern. But I think that if you go all the way with it, sometimes it actually works out. So um, I still have a couple of the cut aparts that I really like, but I've run out of a lot of the background sheets. I, and so I'm going to take a break from designing and I'm going to start actually just assembling some cards. So you see here, I am basically creating a little grid design with this um, square cut apart and rectangle cut apart. And I'm in this instance putting a bunch of busy patterns on a more solid pattern. Again, you can go the other way. You can go super, super busy all over the place. And I think that sometimes that really works out cute. But in this particular instance, um, I'm going to see how it, like those couple of busy patterns gridded together on a solid really kind of work out. And I basically, that little strip of seashells is one of the leftover bits. And I'm just going to show you assembling one so you can kind of see what I did. But I, you know, I held it up to the journaling card, trimmed it up, and then paired it next to it. For the next card, I had picked out these mermaids with the super fun um, mermaid and ocean critter background paper. But again, that's kind of an instance of busy on busy. And I'm going to decide to sort of pare it down with a more solid paper. So, you know, I hear I'm debating between the green and the purple, and that's why I really encourage you to, when you're working with these pattern papers, to kind of cut apart a bunch of it at one time or lay out a bunch of it at one time and just sort of have a play, like move things around, put one piece on top of another piece, compare it to a different color or something like that. And here, you know, I liked that green. So I thought, well, maybe there is a way I can still pull that green in because I do think it worked well with them. Um, I just, you know, kind of like the purple a bit better. So I'm just going to find another scrap of the green and see how I can incorporate it in. And this green, because it's monochromatic, works pretty well for the sentiment. You actually can um, read the sentiment fairly well. I will say if you're going to stamp uh, sentiments onto pattern paper, even if it's subtle patterns, I recommend a little bit thicker of a sentiment because these are a scripty sort of calligraphy sentiment. I think that they work out pretty well for that because they do have those thicker lines that make them a bit easy to read. Whereas if you go with something that's really, really thin, then um, it becomes hard to read, read even on subtle pattern papers. So that's just a little tip for, you know, how do you, you know, pick out sentiments or pick out a stamp set to work with it. I also really like this stamp set from Create a Smile because I thought that the scriptiness paired well with the sort of feminine mermaid look of this particular line. And honestly, I don't know that I'd consider any of the cards today that I make to be particularly masculine. I know some people had kind of asked me to try to make out some cards that were more appropriate for men or boys with these paper pads, but I felt like Under the Sea has a lot. Uh, it's, I mean, it's very distinctly meant to be a girl line for one, because it says little girl all over it. And there's a ton of pink and purple, which are generally considered girl colors, but you know, a lot of dudes wear pink now. <laughs> um, so, you know, not to say that a, a, there's not little boys who would enjoy this, but just that, you know, it's definitely meant more for little girls. And so I don't know that 
you know, I, I could have really tried to limit myself and picked out one or two cards that were not so feminine, but I kind of just let the slide be what it was. And it's, you know, it's meant to be sort of, you know, pink and purple and cutesy colors. And so that's what it is. Um, but here again, I'm sort of toning down these busier cut aparts with some more solid pattern papers. And I, you know, pulled in that green. There'll be two of it. I'm not going to show you me taping down two of it because once you saw me tape down one, you've seen it all. But all of these cards will be in a blog post. So I'm going to show you them again at the end of the video, but you can go to the blog and like, you know, take a minute to really look at them if you want to kind of see a little bit closer what each one looks like because I, you know, of course I do speed up everything and I am, you know, I add some extra things here and there in with the tutorial part of this. So I don't always explain at what every little measurement is. Um, but you know, generally these strips are three quarters of an inch. Uh, the backgrounds are always four by five and a quarter. The cut aparts are whatever size they come from Doodlebug. But if you're confused about any of the measurements, just leave a comment below or a comment on the um, blog post and I'll try to get back to you, you know, relatively soon. So there's that little cute little sea, sea horse card. I really love that cut apart. And I'm going to come up with another use for these uh, striped backgrounds since I do have four of them. Or sorry, eight of them, two from each one. And there's two papers, so, you know, eight in all. Um, so I can use it a couple of times and I think that it's pairing well. So, you know, again, I'm going to take that seashell assembly, you know, that little nine by nine square of seashells with the white pair it with this busier striped paper and um, with a sentiment strip along the bottom. You may have noticed that throughout the video, I tend to glue elements down and then turn them over and cut them off rather than trying to make exact measurements. I find that to work a lot easier for me and I've mentioned that a few times just because I think that sometimes uh, we get concerned with trying to cut up all the little pieces to the exact size and sometimes you can actually save yourself time by not measuring um, and just, you know, kind of accepting that you're going to have an inch or two of paper wasted here or there, but to save yourself a lot of the hassle of all the measurements that go along with it. So one of the reasons that I really was drawn to this particular paper pad is because I love rainbows. And while there isn't a lot of explicit rainbow patterns, like there's no actual rainbows, for instance, there is a lot of use of rainbow color, the rainbows in those stripes and the rainbows here in the fish. And so I really wanted to, you know, actually use the rainbow sides of the papers. And so here I'm using the rainbow fish and I thought it'd be cute to pair them with another sort of fishy element, which is this um, whale cut apart here. And um, I'm also thinking on this one, you know, I'm not really sure where the sentiment's going to go, but also thinking maybe I don't need a sentiment for every card and um, thinking that also if you didn't want to pair a stamp set with it, or if you didn't have a similar stamp set, you could probably make most of these cards and just leave off the sentiment and they would still look really cute. Um, having that extra strip of pattern paper without a sentiment is also sometimes nice. So, you know, don't feel pressured to include something like that. And, you know, again, as I've mentioned in the past, I try not to include too much extra. You know, I know that a lot of people out there have plenty of stamps and they have buttons and enamel dots and, you know, whatever. And I could put those on my cards um, and that a lot of people would have that. But not everyone does, and some people want to be able to craft on a budget. And so I'm kind of trying to show you that you really can do that. There is, you know, a stamp set, a paper pad, a pack of stickers. And honestly, you could take out some of those. You know, you could take out the stickers or take out the um, stamp set and for the most part still make some really nice cards. Um, you know, you do have to have a paper trimmer and white cardstock and that sort of thing. I haven't found a way to avoid that yet. But... Here, I am coming back to that little pattern paper with all the teeny tiny squares. And I didn't know what I was going to do with it. And then I decided I was going to cut it into three by three inch squares because, uh, you know, there is a six by six paper. So if you cut it in half and half again, you should get generally three by three squares. Now, they're not going to be 100% perfect um, just because printing can be off. Um, and in fact, one of the reasons that I'm not making four of this card is that um, 
the one had a little dot pattern on the side that kind of got messed up and was cut off in a weird way. And so I didn't want to use it as a three by three square. That's just a personal preference. Maybe your particular pattern paper pad didn't get cut off funny like that, or you don't mind so much, and then you can go for it. But what I'm doing here is I'm taking my white cardstock base and I am cutting it to three and a quarter inch wide by eight and a half long. And then I'm folding it in half so that I make a three and a quarter by four and a quarter card. Three and a quarter will give me a little quarter inch border around these three by three squares. And then it will leave me about an inch along the bottom as well. And so I'm going to take those three quarter inch strips and use them to stamp some sentiments underneath these little blocks. And in that way, I'm going to make six cards really quickly, really easily, with very little. Um, because they have so much going on in those little squares at the top, I thought that was kind of just like enough for the card design and just put a sentiment beneath it. And honestly, if you were just trying to make a little like card to attach to a gift, um, you might not even need to add the sentiment underneath it. You just make a little three by three square. Um, but here I want to show you something cool. I got some VersaFine ink on my card base and definitely didn't want a splotch of ink on my white card base, even though I was probably going to cover it up in this instance. But here's the tip. This is a Tombow sand eraser, Tombow mono sand eraser that I have there. And it's made for ink. It's made to get ink off of cardstocks. It's basically like sandpaper in an eraser form and took that ink right off the pattern paper for me. And I didn't have to worry about it. Again, in this particular instance, the spot I smeared probably would have been covered up by the sentiment, but I thought I'd mention that tip just in case you hadn't heard about that Tombow Mom Mono Eraser. It works really well with the VersaFine. And so some of these, the measurements were like a little wonky. The four and a quarter was a little too long. So as you can see here, I'm just going to go back with my paper trimmer and trim off the tiny bit of extra and not worry that the cards aren't you know, perfectly any one size. Um, Cause again, these cards, uh, there is no requirement for card size for the place that I donate most of my cards to. However, you do want to consider um, that they are going to children. And so I think that, and, and hospitalized children. So some of these children are sick. So I think that with this particular paper pad, glitter would be adorable. Um, you know, like this collection really lends itself to adding glitter, uh, enameled dots would be really cute to add like as little bubbles, uh, buttons, ribbon, uh, and the ribbon I could have added, but I don't want to include enamel dots. I don't want to include glitter. I don't want to include buttons, the enamel dots and buttons because a young child could pull them off the card and try to eat them. Um, some of them, you know, the enamel dots kind of look like candy and I wouldn't want anyone, you know, to have trouble with my card. I wouldn't want anyone, you know, to, to try to swallow it there or same thing with buttons. I don't want to pull them off. I don't want it to be a hazard. Glitter can be a hazard to children who have um, breathing issues. And so again, I really just want these cards to be cute, fun, and perfect for the particular drive that I'm donating to or the particular organization I'm donating to. However, glossy accents could have been added. Um, and I've done that before. So, it, you know, you could add just a little touch here and there to some of these cards, like to you know, to the bubbles or things like that. So just as another extra idea there. So at this point, um, and actually even before those uh, grid cards there, right, just before, I was beginning to get worried that I wasn't even going to be able to make 20 cards with this pattern paper pack because I had run out of the card bases. And now I'm at the point where I'm like basically gluing two four inch or two two inch by six inch strips together to make four inch card bases. Um, but since I didn't need any of those card base size pieces for those six cards I just made, that kind of really helped me, you know, get a few more cards out of this paper pack and got up to 26, which I think at this point is a six by six pattern paper record. Um, I don't think I've gotten 26 cards out of any of the other paper pads yet. So um, I don't necessarily want to keep trying to beat that record, <laughs> but 
I do think that um, it was nice when I thought I wasn't even going to be able to get 20, being able to come up with an idea to get even a bit more out of it. So here I'm making two pretty similar cards. Because I run out of the card base size, I um, am no longer able to make two exactly the same cards. And so I'm just kind of working with a similar design in this instance. And I have glued two of the two-inch strips together, put another two-inch strip along it to sort of cover that seal. So it looks like a solid piece because of the strip, but it's not. Um, and then I'm going to add this dolphin cut apart. I really, really wanted to use the dolphin because I thought he was adorable. Um, my little cousin loves dolphins, and so I know that uh, some little kids are going to be super happy to receive these cards. And I'm going to stamp a simple sentiment on these little scraps of purple paper. Again, I'm really trying to go to my scraps at this point because I'm kind of like running short on supplies and ideas and things like that. And sometimes I'm going to cut the sentiment strip as a banner. Other times it doesn't quite fit. These sentiments have those sort of little swirls at the end that make it a little bit hard to cut into a banner. Um, this particular paper pad had a lot of super cute critters, which made me think of um, sharing with you that I have a Facebook group dedicated to um, people who love to use critters in their card making or paper crafting. I'm like a huge fan of critters. I like to draw my own critters. I like pattern papers that have critters in it. I like critter stamps. And so I created a little Facebook group where we can kind of share all our critter creations. And that link is always in my video description. So if you want to check that out, if you love to use critters like me, if you love Doodlebug, you probably do love critters just because there's a lot of critters in there. Um, in their paper pads. So you might want to, you know, check that out and join us. So like I said, I'm getting to the end of my supplies. However, um, I had saved this solid piece. This is the one that I had cut apart for some sentiments in the past. But in this instance, um, I had kept this one solid and uh, plain. And I thought, well, this is a good time to sort of pull out the stickers. I've gotten quite a few cards. I think at this point I actually have made 20 cards from just the pattern paper, and I haven't even used any stickers yet, um, which is kind of my goal. Like, I want to make a good amount without any stickers at all, so those of you who choose not to get the stickers or, you know, don't like using stickers can still have a lot of ideas. But, you know, the stickers are super fun, and part of my goal with getting the stickers is that I won't use them all, and I'll have some extras to share with you, um, because as I have done in the past, I'm going to have a little prize pack at the end of the video for anyone who is interested and wants to leave a comment. So I've created a little sticker scene here, and I'm just going to glue that to a card base. Some of the stickers are overhanging the sides just a little bit, which I think is cute and adds a little bit of movement to the scene. Um, so that's kind of my simple sticker scene card. I did one of those on my last video as well because their their stickers are really do lend themselves to making those little scenes. And I think that are fun. Um, I did not get to use this rainbow paper pad last time um, when it was a big solid piece because it just didn't work out for the pattern I wanted. So I said I'm going to take those two two inch strips and I'm definitely going to use them as the rainbow side because I love the rainbow side. I don't want to turn it over to the coral starfish. And so um, I, this time I didn't have any more two inch strips to cover the center line, you know, cover that little seam. Um, but I did have one last piece, uh, one last strip of purple that was going to be used for sentiments that I didn't need. And I had this H2O like cut apart that I I just was like, I don't know that that really makes sense on a card. Um, it's, you know, cute, and I could put it in one of those, like, little collage type things. But then I thought, well, what if I could cover the H2O, like, with um, the stickers? And, you know, that way it wouldn't be clear that it was supposed to say H2O, and it would just look like a piece of ocean background. And I really loved the mermaids from the sticker collection and from this collection in general. So I thought, you know, I'll put the mermaid and a little critter with her. The jellyfish worked out really well to cover that last O. And then I had put some seashells that at first I thought, oh, they'll just be floating in the ocean, which kind of doesn't make sense because they would fall to the bottom. But then they kind of look like they're like hair decoration. So I think it worked out. Um, but basically just kind of covered up the H2O. 
So if you see a sentiment that you don't like, sometimes you can just cover it up with stickers. And I'm going to use that thought again later in the video because I have that water baby um, uh, sea turtle one that I don't really like. I think it's super cute for uh, scrapbook layouts, but doesn't really make sense for cards. Um, and so here I'm like working on the last little bits of what I have. I have no more pattern paper of any significant size. I only have little strips. And I have these cut-aparts. So I want to find a way to use the cut-aparts to make another car that doesn't need a pattern paper strip. Again, there was a sentiment on that cut-apart that I didn't like. It said... Uh, I forget, it, but it was really detailed and it wasn't really a card saying. Plus, I have two more cut-aparts with sentiments on them. So I thought it was a lot of words. And I decided to instead um, cover it with a mermaid. So it looked like the, and since on the bottom of it is some seashells and some sand, I thought, well, that makes sense for her to be there. Um, it, it almost kind of looked like it was meant to be there, in fact. Um, so I was out of mermaids, though, so I found that the octopus was quite large, and he kind of, or she, I guess, since it has a flower and everything, um, that she would cover the sentiment as well. And again, kind of looked like she was supposed to be there because she's just, you know, swimming towards the bottom of the ocean. Um, and so I was able to come up with two more designs just by assembling those groups of pattern paper and covering, or this group of cut-aparts, and covering a sentiment that I didn't like. Um, why I love a uh, paper that has two sides is because also if you don't like the one side, you can just turn it over. I thought that the uh, little squares there were too busy for this card design. And so I just turned it over and was able to use the other side. If it was only one side, I think it would be a lot harder, personally. Now, what I am gluing it to is a standard A2 size card, but as you can see, the bottom is a little bit thicker than it should be. So again, I'm just going to trim it because I don't need to have a perfectly A2 size card. So I'm just going to chop that bottom off and I will again glue that second set there. So finally, I'm done. <laughs> I am quite happy to see that I actually got 26 cards out of it. Because like I said, there was a point in time where I was like, I am out of pattern paper. I don't think this is going to work. Um, but here they all are. Um, they, uh, I'm going to show you them fast here, but don't worry, they'll be slower at the end of the video. There's a whole blog post where you can check them out. You can ask me about measurements if need be, but here are the 26 cards. And there is going to be, of course, a little tiny giveaway for you guys. Um, if you leave me a comment in the video description below, I will send you this little bit of the dolphin washi tape from Doodlebug all the leftover stickers. There's not much, but there's some really super cute ones in there. Um, and the little bits of journaling cards that are still left. So just, you know, leave a comment, let me know what you think. Um, and here's what's left, like just literally scraps, you know, very, very little. Um, and like I said, 26 cards. So quite happy with that. Um, you know, leave a comment to win. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. It helps me to know that you are enjoying these. Um, and you can subscribe to my channel for more of these. I will be doing a couple of more paper pads in the next couple of weeks. And um, you can check out my links to the blog post and to my social media. There's also, if, again, if you like critters, you, you, know, you probably do because you like Doodlebug, I do have a class at Big Picture Classes that teaches you how to make some scenes for your critters. So you could check that out as well. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch this video. I know that they're long, but I hope that you get a lot of fun ideas. I am really trying to mix it up and not create the same cards every time, even though I'm working with a very similar style of paper pad. So I hope you continue to enjoy these. And just, yeah, thank you so much. <laughs> Have an awesome, awesome day. Bye.